Morell with Audio Video. Oh, hey, everybody, this is Nick Morell with Audio Video Export. It's a pleasure to be able to uh, be on the line with you guys today. And uh, obviously, if you're looking at this on the recording, uh, thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, again, we're the authorized export wholesale distributor for Latin America and the Caribbean. Um, but there's going to be a lot of really great information here that's going to apply for other territories as well because the product is a product. Um, but, you know, uh, feel free to get in contact with us uh, if you are looking to be able to purchase in that territory. Um, my contact information, I'll go over it again at the end of the presentation, is nick at av-export.com. Um, or you can always um, speak to your salesperson here within the, within the company. Uh, along with us today, we've got a really great resource for us, uh, Miguel Palcar uh, of Shure Microphones. We're just, he's such a great resource. Uh, we've gone to the Dominican Republic together. We're gonna be going to Panama together um, at the beginning of next year. Um, we've done a lot of uh, trainings together and uh, just a really great friend and resource. And thank you so much, Miguel, for being on. Before I turn it over to Miguel, though, I just wanted everybody to know that you are listening to me actually on the MXA 902. It's the new product that was announced this year at Infocom of 2023, it was launched and uh, it's a great product. You can hear the audio quality of it is phenomenal. Um, the great advantage of the 902 is that it's also got the speaker that's built in, but I don't wanna take too much away from what Miguel's gonna be talking about um, as we go through the presentation. There are a lot of really great systems. Not everything is a one size fits all. That's one of the great reasons that we've got these modular systems from Shure to be able to allow us to have whatever size room covered. So thanks again, Miguel, for being here and for our attendees. For our attendees who are here, there is a chat box and a question box. Feel free to uh, put your question there and we'll uh, get to it. Thanks so much, Miguel. All right. Thank you, Nick. Um, well, welcome, everybody, and hope everybody's OK. Uh, my name is Miguel Pauker. I'm the uh, market development specialist for Latin America and the Caribbean. And uh, you have my contact information on right on the screen. Uh, hopefully, you can see the screen and what I'm sharing. Um, so if you have any questions regarding Shure, please feel free, uh, send me a note, whether it's a, you know, WhatsApp on my cell phone or email address, I'm happy to help. Um, also, one other thing before we begin, uh, we do want to um, steer everybody towards our online portal. It's the Shure Audio Institute or SAI. We do offer um, technical trainings on pretty much all of our products there, whether you're looking at a product like um, like the Motive line that belongs in retail stores or uh, these products that we'll see here for integrated systems. Uh, you can certainly go to sai.training.sure.com. You can scan that QR code and you'll find all sorts of uh, technical enablements for, for these products that we'll be seeing. Um, so the title, as we say, is how to choose the proper system for your room. Um, obviously, a lot depends on the room's characteristics, on the room's uh, measurements, dimensions, on the acoustic treatment in the room. Um, but the goal of Shure is to uh, provide a good solution, audio solution for video conferencing needs. And uh, there are a lot of different solutions that are offered by Shure. Um, so we're going to cover a little bit of each, but you know, obviously, if you, if you need more information, we would refer you to our online portal, or you can ask me a question directly. That's perfectly fine. We do have more than 98 years experience in audio. Uh, this year, 2023, we turn 98. Next year, 2024, will be 99. So in 2025, we'll have the, um, uh, the 100 year anniversary, which will be very exciting. But one thing we do want to focus on before looking at the solutions is why does sound matter? And this is because a lot of times uh, our integrator partners, for example, uh, deal with the customer. And a lot of times the customer may be going towards a more uh, video based solution. You know, it's, it is video conferencing at the end of the day. So sometimes they want the best resolution for their cameras, the best resolution for their displays, the best resolution for their video walls. But what about sound? And we want to focus on this a little bit because sound is important. As the slide here says, bad sound can and will reduce the ability uh, to uh, for the listener to retain uh, memory and attention. And this is something that's been scientifically proven. When we hear sound over a video conference, our ears are receiving that information. And when we receive that information in a clear, natural sounding way, 
our brains work better. And this is because if we have bad sound quality, the brain compensates for that bad sound quality. And what that means is that when, when we don't hear that message well, our brains start making an effort in order to compensate for that bad sound quality and our brains start overworking. And when that happens, uh, our brains start overworking. We can't hear well, we can't hear the message, we can't understand the message. That's when we start feeling uncomfortable over time. And uh, it's probably happened to you if you're listening to this, if you can't hear someone well over a video conference call, after a while, you'll notice that you start getting, you start feeling tired, you start feeling uncomfortable, you start looking out the window to see what, what might be happening with traffic, uh, you know, you start checking your phone to see what's going on. Um, so this is scientifically proven. That usually happens because of bad audio quality. You're not receiving that message correctly. And who needs to hear that message correctly? Students. So we're going to focus on students for a little bit here. Um, educational institutions. This is a poll that was conducted by the Swedish Association of Hard of Hearing People in 2011. Um, of what are the main complaints students might have uh, when they don't hear well in a hybrid learning situation where uh, maybe a college classroom, a college teacher is trying to do an online stream or an online class. Noise is bothersome. You can't hear the teacher. 62% will say they can't hear the other students when they ask a question. So this is something that we can consider when making an installation, making a project for a university or an online learning type environment. And what are the main complaints? Also, uh, concentration issues. They can't concentrate well. They feel irritable. They feel tired. They have difficulty memorizing. And the last one, which doesn't show here, is headaches. They can get a headache from not being able to listen well. They're sitting in front of the computer all day and they can't hear what the teacher is saying. On the other hand, you have the instructors. Uh, the instructors might have to force their voice and speak louder. And that can cause all sorts of problems like vocal wear, hoarse voice, dry mouth, forcing the speak, forcing the volume, vocal fatigue. These are pretty real problems. And, and an instructor, in order for them to be able to communicate properly, I mean, they have to communicate properly because they need to be able to express a message and have the student receive that message clearly so that they can absorb that message. So if we want to be able to avoid these problems, excessive use of voice, uh, problems with discomfort with students, then we want to make sure that we have good quality audio. And good quality audio will benefit productivity and collaboration because we'll be able to communicate better. We'll be able to express that message both ways. We'll be able to improve the health and well being of not only the instructor or the person who is speaking so that they don't have to speak louder, but also our own well being so that we can hear the message clearly and we don't have to make an effort to be able to understand the message. But also customer perception. And this is something that a lot of uh, companies don't really think about is uh, how will they be perceived? if they conduct a video conference meeting with their customers and their customer can't hear them well. Imagine also um, a, a, a work interview, a candidate interview. A lot of times we're, we're interviewing candidates over video conferencing. And if the candidate on the other side of the call can't hear the person conducting the interview, that may look um, you know, incorrect or that may, look, that may not look adequate for the candidate. What kind of company will they be joining if they can't have good audio in their video conference? And let's not forget that we do conduct a lot of meetings. An average of 16 hours per week are spent in meetings. That's more than 800 hours per year. So in order to improve audio in a video conferencing meeting, there are four key components we need to focus on. One would be the microphone, which is the starting point to capture a voice. Um, if we can imagine the audio signal chain as a, as a chain, then the microphone would be the first link. That would be the first point 
where the voice is being captured so that the message can be expressed correctly. And you also have processing, which might include automatic mixing, acoustic echo cancellation or AEC, noise reduction, automatic gain control or AGC. And then obviously we have the speakers to be able to hear the other, the far end of the call so that we can hear the other side of the call. And maybe a little bit of control of the system so that we can control what we're hearing. Maybe we, maybe we want to mute the microphone or maybe we want to mute the speakers. Now, the reality of joining video and audio in video conferencing can mean a total headache. And we understand that as well from, from sure. So the solutions that we're going to see here try to make things easier, not only for the end user, but also for the integrators, so that it's not a headache to install and integrate these audio solutions with the rest of the video conferencing chain. So what are five main complaints in video conferencing that we're trying to address? And this is taken from polls that have been conducted over the years. Background noise, for one. Difficulty connecting, echo, audio cutting out, and can't hear the person speaking. So hopefully with these solutions that we're going to see, we'll be able to address all of these complaints. And last but not least, there is a cost to having a low performance project. Uh, every year, the PMI, Project Management Institute, publish, publishes uh, an article which is called Pulse of the Profession, the High Cost of Low Performance. And in 2020, this was reported that for every $1,000 million or $1 billion invested in a project, $114 million are wasted, considered low performance projects due to inefficient communication. And what that means is um, those projects where the person can't be heard clearly are considered low performance projects. Those are the projects where, for example, the user uh, is told we can't hear you properly, they have to call the integrator. The integrator has to come out and you know, observe what's going on, see whether there's a different solution for the project. And that includes time invested. That includes money investment because the integrator has to come out. And that includes gas, for example. That includes time. So those can be considered low performance projects and that can be considered wasted investment. So ultimately, what Sure wants to do as a company is improve collaboration, have it be a key to be effective and productive, be able for the end user to express their message clearly so that others can understand and hear that message clearly. And that is called intelligibility. We seek to improve intelligibility for not only the speaker, but also the listener on the other side of the call. So four key considerations for this type of solution. Simplicity. Make it be a simple solution, as simple as possible, not only for the end user, but also for the integrator. Because we want the integrator to be able to set up the system quickly, be able to set up the system without having to um, consult with a manual or with a consultant. We want it to be stable so that it works today, it works in six months, six years. To be scalable so that it can work in a small room, like a huddle room, for example, all the way up to an auditorium or a large conferencing room. And to be able to adapt to modern day standards. There's a lot of standards out in the market. There's Zoom, there's Teams, there's Google Meets. Uh, there's blue jeans. Uh, there, we some still use Skype to this day. So there's a lot of standards. We want to be able to work with all of those different standards in the market. So then let's take a look at our solutions portfolio from Shure. Uh, we do have a lot of different solutions in our portfolio. We're going to try to break them down. And what we're going to see here is not all of the solutions, but it's some of the more uh, common ones that we'll see in the market. We have wired mics, 
which wired mics, there's nothing wrong with that. You can use a wired microphone. However, most users nowadays will not want to have a microphone on top of the table. Why? Because we already have a lot on the table as, as we know. Uh, we might have the laptops, we might have notebooks, we might have pens, we might have uh, glasses of water, cups of coffee. Uh, we might also have um, other items. Um, so if you add on top of that microphones and microphone cables, it may look a little too disorganized. But if the customer has the budget for it and that's their need, then we can certainly look at wired cables like Centraverse, which is the, uh, the most basic starting point uh, that Shure offers. We also have the Microflex line of cabled microphones. And Microflex, once you start seeing the word Microflex, that means it's aimed towards video conferencing solutions and permanent installations. So you also have the Microflex line of uh, wired cables, of wired microphones. And we also have the Microflex Advanced line, which we'll see a little bit towards the end because that is the newest that Shure offers. And we do consider them cable microphones because they require an Ethernet cable. Part of our wired solutions include the STEM ecosystem. And STEM, we can consider STEM as a uh, sort of all-in-one microphone speaker solution, but we can consider it as a USB peripheral. So if we have a user that simply needs a uh, cabled microphone solution that includes speaker, includes microphone, and we just want to plug it into a Mac or PC with a USB cable, then STEM is the ecosystem to go with. Now, the thing to remember about STEM is that, again, it can be considered as a USB peripheral. So if you can imagine having a USB peripheral, if you want to add more microphones, or if you want to have a more detailed installation that requires additional control, then STEM may fall out of that class. Uh, STEM is strictly designed as a, an ecosystem that will plug into your computer via USB. If we're looking to plug into a, another peripheral, like, a, uh, for example, an, uh, a video bar that accepts USB connection, STEM does not connect to those devices. STEM needs to see a Mac or PC via USB in order for it to work properly. So STEM is comprised of um, different um, uh, products. We have ceiling, for example, ceiling is a ceiling mic. However, it is a single cover, coverage beam that can be uh, small, medium, or large, but you cannot aim stem ceiling like you can with other microphones from the Microflex line, for example. We have a wall, which is a microphone and speaker. And wall uh, requires PoE plus all of these products from the STEM ecosystem require PoE plus. So wall is no exception. You would have to power it with a PoE plus source, whether it's a PoE plus injector or a PoE plus switch. And if you're using wall by itself, you can connect USB from wall to your Mac or PC directly. And then you have the wall speaker and the microphone as an all-in-one audio solution. Uh, this does not include the video camera, but you, you now have the flexibility to place the video camera wherever you want. You can have wall beneath the uh, screen, for example, and then you can have the camera above the screen or on the corner of the office. So you have a little bit more flexibility to play with where you can place the camera versus an all-in-one camera and audio system. So wall is very flexible in that, in that sense. Again, it has a very good audio quality speaker and it has a directional microphone so that no matter where you sit in the room, the wall will capture where you're, you're seated, seated, you know, whether it's left or right. So it points at the speaker to prevent background noise. Uh, we also have table. I'm going to highlight them here with a, on the screen. We also have table, which is uh, also a microphone and speaker. It also requires PoE Plus, and you can connect USB directly from table 
to your Mac and PC and use it as, a, as an all-in-one audio solution. Now you have a directional mic also that can point to wherever the person is seated. And you also have a speaker that points downwards and uses the table's reflection to improve audio quality from the other end of the call. Now let's say we need to use wall and table at the same time. Obviously you can connect two USB uh, devices to your computer, but Teams, Google Meet, for example, will only allow you to use one USB source. So if that's the case, wall and table can connect to a PoE Plus switch, and we can unify all those connections with STEM Hub. And then you would only have USB from STEM Hub directly to your Mac or PC, and now you can use wall and table at the same time, or maybe do a combination, wall and ceiling, wall, table, and ceiling as well, or ceiling and table. Etc. Miguel, so um, have, with regard to yeah. the, this, if you've got a hybrid system there where you've got multiple microphones, is the hub going to mix the two microphones together or is it going to do a selection of one or the other um, based on volume as far as like an auto select? It will do its own auto mixing and its own processing. Okay. So if you have a STEM hub, uh, then it uses pretty much all of the recourses of wall and table so that, you know, for example, if you're closest to table, then obviously you're going to hear a little bit better the sound of table than from wall, but STEM Hub will do all that auto mixing for you. And in that particular case, is that something um, that has to be configured like it does in the in in the MXA system or is this like I'm trying to as we're talking about these different systems um, my understanding is that the stem system is is a lot more user friendly in so much that it does a lot more of a configuration for you with less hands on. Yes, that's correct. Um, the stem ecosystem is designed to be auto uh, completely auto configurating. So you would just need to connect them together, plug them into your computer and you're ready to go. Uh, you do have some options, uh, like for example, the room adapt feature, which will send a tone so that the microphones can auto calibrate. But the idea is that the user simply plugs into USB and they're ready to go. You don't have to do any additional configuring, any additional enabling, nothing like that. Um, now, having said that, um, if you're using STEM, obviously you cannot use a separate microphone. So if the user wants to add another microphone, even if it's something like an SM58, you do not have audio inputs in STEM. So you would be limited to that. If they want to add additional microphones, then you can look at a different type of system, like the like Microflex Advanced system, for example. Um, so in that sense, STEM is a little bit more hermetic. Um, if you want to add a speaker, for example, you do have STEM speaker, and this is network only. It works with a PoE Plus switch, but it will not work with any other system. So it only works with the STEM ecosystem. So now you can see that it's more of an ecosystem. And then you have control if you want to have some control over the devices. Um, this only works, control only works with the STEM ecosystem. It will not work with any other systems or any other line in the Shure family. Great, so, so there we have the STEM ecosystem. It's a very, very good system. Um, if you're looking for a plug and play, USB peripheral type of, of system, but if you're looking for something more advanced, we do have other solutions in our portfolio like our wireless microphones. So wireless microphones, we do have different models, but this depends on what the user is looking for. And I'll explain myself. If um, you're looking, for example, BLX is the entry level system, uh, which is the most basic system that Sure offers. It's a very good wireless system. It, it works very well. It sounds very well. But if the user, for example, wants to have more than six wireless microphones, let's say, for example, it's an auditorium or it's a training room and they need six different microphones, I would not recommend BLX. The reason being that BLX is an analog system. So analog systems will take up a little bit more space in the RF spectrum. 
And what that means is that um, if I use a lot of BLX models, I may run out of RF spectrum very quickly. If I need more microphones, I might consider a digital system like SLXD, which is the step up. SLXD is a digital system. It has great sound quality. It feels a little bit more professional. Um, and uh, I can uh, use a little bit more wireless microphones than I could with BLX. Let's say, for example, I, need, I, I have a user that wants to use seven, eight microphones at a time. Then I would recommend SLXD, uh, which is a digital system, so it takes up less space in the RF spectrum. So I can use more systems than I could with BLX. Now, if I'm looking at something like a theater or an auditorium where I'm using 10 or more wireless microphones, I might consider the next step up, which is QLXD, which we consider more uh, going into our more professional lines, where you can use this in a theater, you can use this in a concert, you can use this in an auditorium. If we're looking at 20 or more wireless systems, we might look at ULXD, which now we have the option of having uh, a dual receiver, two microphones at a time, or a quad receiver where in one rack space we can receive up to four microphones at a time. So compare that to if you have QLXD, which is a single rack, single half rack receiver. So we have 16 QLXD microphones, which we can use. Then we would need eight rack spaces for the 16 half uh, rack receivers. And we would also need uh, antenna distribution systems because it's not a good idea to have multiple antennas too close to each other. So then we would consider four ULXD, four quad receivers. Then we have the 16 channels in four rack spaces, and I would only need one antenna distribution system. So I'm saving a little bit more space and saving a little bit more cost as well. So it really depends on how many microphones the, the user wants to have in the room. It depends on how many microphones we'll be using all at once. It depends also on um, whether we want to have uh, save a little bit in rack space or not. Um, I'll go into Microflex Wireless in a little bit, but I want to focus a little bit on Axiom Digital. Axiom Digital is the top of the line that Sure offers. This is what the pros are using. And by pros, I mean, um, uh, artists such as um, uh, Jay Balvin, artists such as Mark Anthony, Jennifer Lopez, they, they will use Axiom Digital because it is the most reliable system in the market. So you may have a customer, and, and this has happened to us uh, in Colombia, for example, we have a bank where the, um, the, 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 the executive staff has used wireless mics and they have used different brands, different models. Every single model has cut out where they're using the microphone and all of a sudden they don't have sound anymore because they have an interference with the system. So they have asked us, what is your top of the line model? The one that the artists use, the one that I'll never have to worry about RF interference. Then we recommend Axiom Digital. It's more costly, but they will have um, less chance of RF interference and less chance of, of having to change the frequency in the microphone on the fly um, because of an RF interference issue. On that note, Microflex Wireless. Microflex Wireless is a flexible system. It is designed for permanent installations. But the thing about Microflex Wireless is that once configured and installed, the customer does not have to do absolutely anything in order for the mic to work. Once uh, you install the access point and the charger, they both work on a, a network. And once installed and configured, the only thing the user has to do in order to have sound is remove the microphone from the charger and it's ready to use. It has a frequency assigned. It has audio. Everything's working completely automatic. So this is more of a, um, an automatic, smart, auto-managed system um, that a customer can use for video conferencing. 
The access point can have up to eight microphones. You have different uh, channel count access points. You have a two channel access point, four channel access point, and eight at channel access point. So you can have up to eight microphones with one access point. If you need more, you can add more access points. If you have 12 microphones, for example, you would need an eight channel access point and a four channel access point. They can work together. If you want 16 microphones, two eight channel access points. If you have 24 microphones, three eight channel access points, and so on and so forth. You would also need the um, uh, charger so that you can charge the batteries. The microphones come with their rechargeable batteries. They include them already. And again, once configured and once set up for the customer, the only thing the customer needs to do is remove the microphone from the charger and it's ready to go. So this is useful for you know, high-end VPs, uh, executive staff, and even also university instructors. Because the university instructors, they sometimes don't want to have to turn on the receiver and synchronize the correct frequency. A lot of times the teachers, the professors, they just want to walk into the room, pick up the microphone, and it's ready to go. So Microflex Wireless would be a great addition for that kind of environment. Next on our solutions portfolio, we have... Yeah, you have a question. Sorry. Yeah, yeah so... Um, the frequencies that we were talking about in the last Microflex wireless as opposed to some of the other ones, right? So I know that with the BLX, SLX, D, and all of the other wireless microphones, we're using standard RF um, that has been carved out um, and whatnot. Um, but there's a difference, if I remember right, that the Microflex wireless, not the complete wireless, but the wireless itself, it's not using those standard RF, it's using um, uh, DECT technology, is that not right? Digital enhanced communications. Yeah, yeah. Um, DECT is a an RF band, so it is RF either way. Um, but um, BLX, SLXD, QLXD, ULXD, and Axiom Digital will work in the um, what we call the UHF TV range, which is between 470 and 616 megahertz here in the US. Um, so that leaves you know a good you know, uh, almost 200 megahertz of, of open space that you can use the microphones in. Microflex Wireless works in the DECT range, which is also within the UHF range, but it's a little bit higher. Um, Microflex Wireless works in 1920 to 1930 megahertz. So it still uses RF, but it just works in a different band. Right. There's a little less congestion on that, or there might even be more. But the the I we've used deck here, you know, for our headsets and whatnot. And the great thing about deck is the range. Um, you've got really good range and clarity on those things. I I, I love using it. It's great. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So yeah, it is it is the same frequency pretty much. 1920 to 1930 megahertz. Great. Um, part of our portfolio also are mixers, processors, and interfaces. Um, like the P300 processor that we're seeing here, but also the uh, any USB matrix USB audio interface, which it takes Dante audio, which we'll see a little bit more of a, a little bit later on. But Dante audio is audio across the Ethernet. The initials literally stand for Digital Audio Network Through Interface Through Ethernet. So that's what what stands for Dante. And what any USB will do is it'll take up to four Dante audio inputs, and you can then take those audio inputs to USB. So you can connect them directly to your Mac PC, and you also have an analog input and an analog output. Now, this is an interface only. It does not do any kind of processing. So it doesn't have any echo cancellation, noise reduction, none of that. It just takes four Dante channels and routes them to USB. So if we have, for example, a system like Microflex Wireless, Microflex Wireless speaks Dante also. And Microflex Wireless, what it'll do is it'll just leave you the individual Dante channel. So if I have four individual Microflex Wireless microphones, that's four separate Dante channels. And if I want to take it to a computer, I can use any USB matrix, four channels into this box, USB directly to the computer. But 
there is no auto mixing, there is no uh, uh, echo cancellation, there is no noise reduction. If I want to have that option, I can add P300, which is uh, uh, the, the correct name is Intellimix P300 because what it does is it takes eight audio, Dante audio channels through network and adds processing. So you will have equalization, you'll have automatic echo cancellation, you'll have noise reduction, you have automatic gain control, but you also have an auto mixer that will mix all of these eight channels. What that means is going back to the example of Microflex Wireless, if you have eight Microflex Wireless microphones, um, this system will just basically leave you with eight individual channels, no mixing whatsoever. So if you have eight Microflex wireless microphones, you can add P300, and now you have what we call the automatic audio engineer. P300 then will take those eight microphone channels and will uh, auto mix them so that when one person is speaking, it'll turn down the other microphone so that they're not always open at the same time. If another person starts speaking, then that person's volume goes up and the other person's volume goes down. Um, so it's like having an automatic audio engineer in the in the room mixing the different microphones, plus you have AEC, noise reduction, automatic gain control, plus you can then take USB from P300 and go directly into your Mac PC. And that way you have not only the microphones, you also have the automatic audio engineer and you have the interface to go directly into your computer. Plus, if you have other audio devices in the room, you can have two audio inputs and two analog audio outputs. So it's a really good, versatile, all-in-one box. Obviously, if you have more audio channels, there are other brands in the market uh, that will have a DSP processor that can process more audio channels. But if you only have eight Dante audio channels and you want to be able to auto mix them, and take them USB to your computer, P300 is your solution. Miguel, what's the suggestion if you've got more um, than let's say 16? Because I know that we've obviously got the IntelliMix software that'll take up to 16 Dante channels, but let's say we've got a 24 MXW system. Well, what's the suggestion in that case? In that case, it's uh, there are other processors, other DSP processors in the market uh, that have that 24 channel count. Okay, understood. So, um, not going to name any other brands just because we're, we're focusing on Shura here, but you know sure. you can talk to Nick from Audio Video Export and he can give you some suggestions. Yep, no problem. But there is always a solution and we can help. There are, yes. Great. Um, other solutions that we have in our portfolio, we also have a network speaker, which is MX, MXN 5C or MXN 5WC, W stands for white. Uh, it's the only color available. This is a uh, ceiling microphone, ceiling tile microphone that only requires a single network connection in order for it to work. So in this case, you don't need an external amplifier. Uh, you would just connect from a switch to the network connection and you're ready to use. Um, this speaker uh, sounds great for the far end of the video conferencing calls. It's not really designed for you know, movie theater or you know, audio listening applications, but it has great sound. It's an all-in-one unit. It connects via network so that you can have, for example, um, um, let's go back to that example. You can have Microflex Wireless, which is strictly network. You don't have audio outputs with Microflex Wireless. You just have the network connection. Connect that to a switch, P300, so you can process the sound of Microflex Wireless, also connects to a switch, and then you can connect, oops, MXN5 WC to that same switch, and now you have your speaker option. So you can hear the other end of the call, all without using audio cables or power cables, because you're powering, this speaker can be powered with PoE or PoE+. Plus. Um, the uh, grill, is magnetic the grill that you see here you can easily remove it you don't have to unscrew it 
if you want to be able to remove the grill for whatever reason, if you want to paint the grill, for example, you can paint the different colors. And also the Sure logo that you see here can, is also magnetic, can also be removed without having to you know, force anything or unscrew anything. You can simply grip the Sure logo and pull it out and it'll pull out, it's, it's magnetic. Um, so then you can have the full range of equipment. You can have microphones, you can have processors, you can have speakers, all connected via network and just use network cables. Let's take a look real quick at a discussion and conferencing uh, because that is part of our solutions. Um, we have the Microflex Complete Wireless System, which is a conferencing system, completely wireless. All you would need is the, uh, the discussion unit, which includes a battery that lasts 11 hours on paper, but it can, and the, the screen measures the, the battery life in hours and minutes. And um, the battery life can be 11 hours 40, 11 hours 50. We've even seen 12 hours of battery use. And that battery meter in the screen uh, has a one minute margin of error. So if you look at the specifications on spec, the battery lasts 11 hours, but it can last up to 12 hours easily. The unit includes its own battery. The microphone is separate because there are different size microphones. You would need the access point. Uh, one access point can admit up to 125 of these units. And you have the charger which will charge up to 10 of these batteries. Uh, the charger will charge the batteries uh, one hour for uh, zero to 50% and zero to 100% in four hours. You can also charge the battery within the unit. The unit has a micro USB connection, so you can add a separate adapter. And uh, this system does have a separate analog input and output so that you can connect a separate microphone connect you to a PA system, for example. Here's a, a, a connection diagram. You also have options like voting. You have uh, two button voting, three button voting, and up to five button voting. Uh, that comes free with the unit. You don't have to purchase additional licenses. You can also display the voting results on the screens or also on a separate display. And the unit itself will pick its own RF channel. Um, it works in 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz. Obviously, 5.5 5 gigahertz is more open. And one single channel in 5 gigahertz will admit up to 125, 125 sorry, um, units. And if there's an interference in this channel, it will automatically jump to the next available channel seamlessly. So if you have an interference, the system will jump to a new channel without any interruptions. So you can have the meeting for 10 hours. It might work um, you know, without any interruptions. And you've had five different interferences events during the, the, the meeting. Nobody noticed. The system will jump by itself without any issues. Now, Miguel, in this particular case, it's not using the decked frequency band like the Microflex wireless is. It's using, Correct. if I remember right, because you just mentioned it, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. So this is Wi-Fi frequencies, Correct. right, which is unlicensed. Um, now, how does the output, whether it be the analog, because this also has Dante outputs as well, is it not? That's correct, yes. So does it do a mix of those signals? If I've got 100 signals of that, is it doing individual channel outputs on that? How does that work? It does do its own mix. Um, now, the audio outputs are grouped in eight audio outputs. So you do have up to eight Dante digital outputs. Um, and you can group the microphones if you choose to do so. You can group them so that you know one through 20 are group one, 21 through 40 are group two, et cetera. Um, so it is eight individual outputs. 
you, you're not going to have an individual algo for each mic. Gotcha. Okay. So at the end of the day, you can group all 120 of them um, into a single group and it'll mix those together. Is there an automatic game control in that mix? Correct. Yes. Nice. nice. So that way you have a, a fully portable, complete system. You can achieve meetings such as this one that we see on screen, where you have a, you know, separated tables, no cables in between. Oh, there's totally another wired. question with regard to the capability, because I know that we've got, you said about voting. Can you, we do translation services with this as well? If you have a, a separate interpreter, then yes. Uh, so you it's can, just one base station for the interpreter. Right. You don't, it doesn't do, you know, translation by itself, but the unit has two audio uh, headphone outputs. So if the user wants to connect the headphone output, uh, you can take the signal from, let's say, for example, the interpreter has one of these units and they're translating. You can have the audio of these units go through the headphone output and the user himself or the, herself can choose which language they want to hear with this rotary knob. Sweet. So that way you can have you know meetings you can have in a in a, an external space such as this one. Here you have the access point and you have the two units. So you can have meetings in a restaurant environment or in a terrace environment if you want to. Um, if the user wants to have a little bit more of a mobile solution. And um, as a sort of last part of our, our solutions portfolio, we also have software available. Uh, we have different types of software, including IntelliNix Room, which is what um, uh, Nick was alluding to a little earlier, which is a software that will install into a computer, Windows-based computer. Um, and now the software can have eight or up to 16 Dante channels. So that way, you might have, for example, your computer doing the audio video conferencing, and the computer will have the IntelliMix Room software. Then you can add the microphone connected via network. And the computer will do all the processing before going out to the video conference. Then all you have to do is add the display, the camera, and the speakers. And that's it. You don't have to have a separate DSP processor like a rack in the room or anything in the cabinet. Just have your computer. IntelliMix Room does all the processing. And IntelliMix Room also offers the denoiser feature, which uses artificial intelligence to um, eliminate background noise. So you only hear the voice of the speaker, and any other noise in the room can be uh, lowered or defeated. Yeah, I wanted I wanted to demonstrate that actually because I've I've got my little keyboard right here, and as I'm talking, I'm clicking and clacking away, and I've got the IntelliMix software that's going on. And you can probably barely hear this if hear it at all. And it's pretty impressive, actually, because I've seen you guys do demos with the, the crinkling of the of the water bottle that can be really loud. You turn it off and you turn it on. By the way, those videos are available on Shure's um, YouTube page. Really neat demos. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Or even, you know, the clinking of, of cups. Uh, we've had a lot of users complain about, you know, cups clinking. Yep, you could you could hear it a little bit from from Nick's side, but again, you 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 also heard denoiser kicking in and sort of lowering that noise, which is what something that denoiser can do. Yeah. So in this setup that we've got, I've got a camera that's on the wall. I've got a computer that's dedicated in my rack. Uh, I've got a monitor right in front of me, and then I've got the MXA nine zero two, which uh, Miguel was talking about the nine two zero. Not to be confused. Uh, so the 920 is the dedicated microphone. The 902 is the same physical look on it, but it's got a speaker that's built in. Um, and I've got the IntelliMix room running on the on the computer there. And the great thing about that is, obviously, there's going to be a minimum uh, computer requirements, um, but most computers can handle it without an issue. It's not really resource intensive, but it does take up some resources in order to be able to do that processing. And and we love it for our. Our space here, I think the 902 covers a six by six meter square. Uh, the 920 will cover a nine by nine meter square, which is ginormous. 
Um, but again, you know, with the 920, you get a lot more features that are involved, zones and whatnot, where you don't get it with the 902, um, but you also have to add the speakers um, separately. And in this particular case, all of this is running in, uh, in a Luxel network. So I know that that's not a sure product. That's not really what our focus is today, but we've got, you know, PoE plus network switches um, that are all fully 100% compatible with Luxel, three-year warranty, uh, support for the life of the product, destroying fields, um, good margins not found online too. So uh, I, I, I didn't know, Miguel, I know that we're running out of time. I didn't know if you were going to be reviewing the 902. Um, yeah, real quick, um, since we have a little bit of time. Um, which brings us to uh, the Microflex ecosystem. Um, which is sort of a, the, the crown jewel, if you want to speak of, of it that way, of, uh, of uh, what Sure offers for video conferencing. And anything you see with the Microflex Advance uh, logo here um, is uh, uh, the new the, the AV standard nowadays. So we'll just take a quick look real quick at the MXA310 microphone array. Uh, this is a tabletop microphone. It does require an Ethernet cable in order to operate. But the great thing is that um, it has up to four pickup uh, points, and you can have a different polar pattern assigned to each pickup point. And you're seeing three here, but it can do up to up to four. And you can rotate them around the uh, microphone. So you can get something like a 360-degree coverage zone, um, but you also have the, pol the toroid polar pattern which um, captures 360 around the table, but has excellent uh, rejection from noises that can come from above. We also have the linear mic array, which is the MXA710. Uh, it looks like a sound bar, but it's a microphone only. And um, this one, uh, you are hearing me right now uh, through an MXA710 with a P300 processor. And this is available in two foot and four foot variant. And it's not as focused as the MXA920 or the MXA902 that we're going to see in a minute. Um, so you have a little bit more of a general coverage. So if you're looking for a microphone that offers more of a general coverage, is not so focused, then MXA710 is a good option. You can mount it on the wall, you can mount it on a table or on a ceiling. So it's very flexible that way and only requires a single Ethernet connection, a single Ethernet cable in order to work. We have the MXA920, which is a ceiling microphone only. Um, this was released uh, last year, 2022. And um, like Nick was saying, MXA920 uh, is a ceiling microphone that can cover from the out of the box, you will be able to cover a nine meter by nine meter or 30 foot by 30 foot area. You can expand that coverage zone to cover even more area, or you can shrink that coverage zone, and you can have up to eight different coverage zones. So you can shrink that coverage zone and cover maybe you know one side of the room where you'll have speakers, and you can create another coverage zone to create a different coverage part for different speakers. Um, and if there's any you know thing in the middle that causes any kind of noise, then the MXA920 will only focus on those coverage areas and we'll have really good noise rejection uh, on the areas that are not covered. So if you can aim at the speakers. It has excellent sound quality. It has very natural sound quality versus the previous model, which was MXA910. This is sort of the evolution of MXA920, of MXA910, I'm sorry. So you have the square version available, but you also have a round version available. So it's the same exact mic. Uh, also connects via Ethernet, but now you have a lot more possibilities with, uh, you know, you have the square version, you have the round version as well. With MXA920, you can do voice lift and sound reinforcement, and you also have the ability to do camera tracking, um, where this microphone will report the, the speaker coordinates in X, Y, and Z coordinates. And uh, we also just recently announced our new partnership with QSC. So if you're using QSYS for processing, then uh, you can use MXA920 for QSC's camera tracking uh, enabled cameras. 
And then last but not least, we also have MXA902, which is the microphone that Nick is using. And this is a microphone and built-in speaker at the same time. So now you have not only the microphone, but you also have the speaker built in so that you can hear the far end of the call. So this makes it an all-in-one unit. Um, you can have it in the ceiling connected with a network switch. And if you want to connect it to your computer, then you just simply need to add any USB matrix and go USB to your computer, add your camera, and you're ready to go. That's all you need. Uh, <clears throat> MXA902 and any USB matrix are currently certified for Teams and for uh, Zoom. So if you use that solution in combination, uh, you will have automatic Teams and Zoom certification. And we recently also received the uh, Google Meet certification. So you can have MXA902 with any USB certified ready for use. And it works with all the mounting options available for MXA920. So you can install it in a drop ceiling, you can install it directly on the ceiling, hard ceiling mount, pole mount, threaded rod suspension, cable suspension. All of these accessories are available from Shure directly. Uh, no, just a quick note about the accessories. Yeah. They are, as Miguel says, they are optional. They don't come in the box. In the case of the ceiling one, which was the first line that uh, Miguel mentioned, um, the ceiling one from STEM, those accessories are included in the box. So that's an all in one. You don't buy them apart, but with the MXA system that you do have to get them separately from us as well. That's correct. So here's some meeting room examples. Uh, this is, for example, a training presentation room where you'll see MXA 710s on the ceiling with MXN5 speakers, P300 connected to a switch. And uh, in this case, you can use a computer with Intellimix Room, for example, um, or P300 USB directly to a computer. Um, and you can go to your video conferencing codec right away. Here's another example. This one's using MXA 910s, but you can use MXA 920s with the ceiling speakers, with P300 connected to a switch. Then from P300 USB to the computer, you're ready to go. Minimal cabling, minimal uh, installation, minimal equipment. Here's another example, a large room, MXA920 with the speakers, P300, all connected to a switch, then USB directly to the computer. So you have a lot of different room options. Here are some real life examples. Uh, these are in Latin America, Ecuador, Uruguay, Costa Rica, where we have, for example, this is a MXA 910 on, in a ceiling. This is MXA 710 hung from a ceiling. This is MXA 710 with an interactive screen, an interactive blackboard screen. This was in Costa Rica. Here are some more examples from the US. Here's MXA 710 the University of Southern California, uh, MXA 910, the previous version, Leeds School of Business in England, University of Bedfordshire, here's the MXA 910. So you do have a lot of different options for different meeting rooms. Depends on what the user's need are, depends on you know, what we can install as, as, um, as in, uh, integrators and installers. And last but not least, I know we're running out of time. Training and education, once again, we invite you to visit our online education portal, Shure Audio Institute. We have a lot of different technical enablements there. If you need help with audio, the Shure Audio Institute, please do let us know. We're more than happy to help. And once again, there's my contact information. So I'll leave the space open. If Nick, if we have any questions, I know we're pretty much out of time, but no, we, we got some of all of the questions, but the, the only other thing that I wanted to mention was that um, with regard to the designing, uh, there is a piece of software that you had mentioned previously that I want to encourage people to be able to get. Uh, you can put in the dimensions of the room, uh, you can change the configuration, and it will show you the coverage space. So if ever there's a question about how to be able to 
um, you know, piece those components together and you want to do it on your own, feel free to download the software. Uh, if you need a little bit more guidance on that, please do feel free to get in touch with either my, Miguel or myself. This is what it is that uh, Miguel and I do all day long. Uh, this is fun for me. I'm sure that Miguel can say the same thing. Um, designing is is a lot of fun and being able to put put the it's kind of like a, a puzzle, right? You know, where we're putting the pieces of the puzzle together in order to be able to figure out based on what the client's needs are. That means the scope of work, the budget, and when it is that they want to be able to close. You know, we can put together uh, all sorts of different systems exactly per the need. And uh, so it's a lot of fun in order to be able to do that. But that same software that's going to be able to show you the design is the same exact software that's going to allow uh, you as the integrator in order to be able to do the configuration, the programming, the configuration of said system. So you don't have to do one piece of software and then replicate it all in another piece of software later on in order to be able to do configuration. It does it all for you. And another neat little piece is that, um, and again, we're, we're out of time, the uh, designer software actually has that um, automatic configuration where once you put all of the put components into the system, you run one button and it understands it's it's intelligent enough in order to be able to know how to be able to do all of those Dante configurations and do um, configurations of the EQ, the automatic gain control, the noise control, um, all in one shot. Uh, and again, because it's doing that and it's working with Dante, it does, if you know anything about Dante, you don't have to run a separate instance of Dante controller if you're doing an all MXA system. If you've got a couple of different components in there, like we were just doing a system with the MXW um, the other day, and we wanted to be able to run that into um, up to 300, that in that point in time, we did need a, a Dante controller. But uh, other than that, you're running everything through Sure Designer, which is really great and really neat. Yes, and Sure Designer is free also. So it is free software that you can download from our website, sure.com. So that's it. That's what covers us. And uh, Miguel, thank you so much. What a wealth of information. Uh, again, my email address, nick at av-export.com. Our office information and my WhatsApp that I carry is 305-885-3821. Uh, thanks again, everybody, for being on here and, uh, and for watching the recording, if that's what you're doing now. So thanks again, Miguel, and we'll see you tomorrow for Spanish. Thank you Bye. very much.